Hello, welcome back to Cindy's Library. I am Cindy. Glad to have you with me today for another Tolkien Talk. So this time, Sir Gowan and a Green Knight, translated by J.R.R. Tolkien, and also Pearl and Sir Orfeo, also by J.R.R. Tolkien. So, this was edited by Christopher Tolkien, and he, he starts us with an introduction, and it is an introduction which explains, uh, I think Sir Gowan and a Green Knight actually did manage to be published in Tolkien's lifetime, but everything in here, that was not the case. And it wasn't the translation that held Tolkien up. It was the commentary to accompany the translation that was the problem. And the biggest part of that was figuring out who his audience was going to be. And we're back. Sorry about that. But yes, audience. He wasn't sure whether he should direct his introduction to a more general audience, to students, to other professionals. And as a consequence, the introductions never got done. However, uh, Christopher did include everything that Tolkien did write on these subjects, uh, mostly on Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, although a fair amount I see on Pearl. And so those are included with this. Also, uh, we have a bit of a glossary here at the end, and we have uh, an appendix that explains a literative verse in Middle English literature, which is what these were in the original, plus the short poem Gwaine's Leave Taking, which I think Tolkien did. The rest are translations. So. What are the three stories in here all about? Who are the authors even? I don't think we know who the um, author of Sir Orfeo is, but Tolkien felt that whoever wrote Sir Gowan and the Green Knight also wrote Pearl. And we still don't know exactly who they are for sure, but there's a lot of similarities. Anyway, the gown and a green knight. Oh, it all starts on Christmas, of course. Arthur has a huge feast already, but he won't start it until he sees a marble. Well, he gets his wish. A huge, huge man, all in green, not only dressed in green, but his skin and beard, etc., are even green. He comes in with this challenge. I'll let anyone come and take his axe, uh, which is also huge, and chop his head off if in a year and a day they will come and find him and allow their heads to be chopped off. And of course, Sir Gowan jumps up to do this, uh, in part because he doesn't want Arthur to do it. And fair enough as far as that goes. So he ch does this, he chops off this green knight's head and the Green Knight is still alive and reminds Gwen of his promise and gave some very vague directions on how to find him. And so Gwen is now obligated to find this Green Knight within a year and a day. 
and receive from him what he gave to the screen knight. A few adventures along the way, most of it spent at a castle of a knight known as Sir Bersalak and his lady. And complicated events happen in there, particularly with the lady involving chivalry versus morality. And Gwen is far forced to walk a very tight line there. So very fun, very interesting. And yes, the Green Knight is obviously from the realm of fairy. He would not be a huge Green Knight otherwise. So very fun. This is one of my favorite Arthur-based stories. And I think it was probably one of Tolkien's as well. Pearl. Uh, Tolkien's argument is that it is basically, uh, well, it is the story of a vision of a man, a uh, vision or dream that he has of his pearl that he lost, who ends up being a young lady, and she tells all about what paradise is lost like etc and what a wonderful life she has and how blessed she is in spite of the father well the man's bereavement tolkien suspected that this was a poem from a father about a daughter who he lost in infancy or maybe toddlerhood and it's very poignant, very, very sweet. Well, I don't have that much more to say about that one, I think. And then Sir Orfeo is basically a reworking in a fairy setting, the story of Orpheus and Eurydice from Greek mythology. And so that's rather fun. And well, let's just say, aside from the fairy setting, uh, because instead of being stolen to the underworld by Hades, uh, Sir Orpheus' wife is taken off by the fairy king, of course. Uh, there are a few differences. It also is a very fun poem. All of these are quite enjoyable. Uh, I can see why Tolkien enjoyed them so much and why he wanted more modern people to be able to enjoy them as well. I found Tolkien's translation easy enough to follow. And so I imagine well, it, it, it is poetry, so you do have to keep in mind. But beyond that, I found these quite easy enough to follow and quite enjoyed all of them. And I'm glad Christopher put these out together uh, with everything his father had connected to them, which isn't very much, but what there is is quite interesting. So... There is my Tolkien talk, J.R.R. Tolkien's Sir Gawain and the Gowan and the G Green Knight with Pearl and Sir Orpheo, which I also read, I guess I should say technically reread for Ancient Sathan. Hmm. Be hard to say is definitely up there as far as what I read for Ancient Sathan. So, anyway, that's what I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Uh, if you've read any or all of these poems, I'd love to hear what you think of them. And until next time, I hope we all stay safe and healthy. And as always, happy reading!